ba 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 right okay welcome back everybody this is a quick how to in unreal engine 4 uh today i'm going to go through how to use uh, some basic line traces so um what I've got here is a little thing doer, and I've hooked up some rudimentary uh, torque. So when I press, uh, you know, the different keys, it rolls it around. And you see here, I have uh, an impediment for us. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that as this guy approaches the impediment, it automatically pops over. We don't have to hit space or anything. And I'm going to do that by using uh, line traces. So. And it's a very useful thing for a lot of other things, but this is a really good example for it. So hop on in here, and we have enable input. So I go ahead and enable input for this guy um, and set that to index zero. I have our movement set up. You can take a look, pause if you need to. Here, I'll zoom in so you can see. Just a pretty primitive torque stuff. It's not really nice. The controls don't work very well. They don't feel good. That is okay for our purposes. And then here's what we're actually going to be putting together. I just have this saved so that I can remember certain like notes here. So we'll start from the beginning though. Uh, we're going to do this from event tick. And what we want to do is uh, we want to trace out in front of the sphere. So let's go ahead and get a reference to the sphere. Uh, that's where we're going to start tracing from. And we want to uh, do a uh, line trace. So we'll go ahead and we want to start at the world position. So let's get a world location, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, get world location, yep. And we want to do a uh, line trace for objects. Or for, yeah, for objects. There's a whole bunch of different types of line traces for objects. And uh, there's a bunch of different types, so you can play around with them all uh, that you can do by channel, by component, so on and so forth. But we're just going to use this basic for objects one. And well, what objects are we looking for? And uh, one nice thing is that it takes an array of ob object types, um, which is what we're going to be using. So we're going to go ahead and just use this make array option right here. And we're going to go ahead and add world static, and we'll add world dynamic, and we'll add ooh, physics body. I, you know, it doesn't matter. You just want it to jump over pretty much anything that it comes across, and that's going to be most of them. But you can add, or you can create a custom arrays. You can set a, you can do this by uh, specific objects too. I think there's easy ways to do that. So we'll go ahead and uh, well, we want to start here. We want to start from the world location of the sphere, uh, and not quite because that that'll put us at the center of the sphere. We might want to hop over lower things. So let's go ahead and break this. And we'll go ahead and then make a vector back. Make vector, there it is. And this might seem silly until you see what I do with the z here, which is going to be minus, so minus float. And I happen to know that a good distance down is, is 30, 30 units down. And that's where we're going to start. So this is actually not starting from the center of the sphere, it's starting from the center of the sphere, but 30 units lower. Um, and where do we want to end? Well, we want to end um, whichever way the sphere is going is where we want to trace. So what we want to do is we want to get its um, get physics linear velocity. And that is going to be our entry point from event tick here. So every tick, we're going to go ahead and get the linear velocity. And uh, from this, we, what we want to do is multiply... Uh, vector times a float, and this is just to make it a little bit less distant because you could be moving pretty fast here. I mean, as far as this math works out, um, set these two here, scoot them a ways away. Um, and what we want to do is we want to start here. We want to end there plus another vector. There you go. So we're going to start here. We're going to end here plus the forward velocity times 0.3. So that's going to give us a vector in the direction and with the magnitude of the velocity. But we don't want the full magnitude of the, magnitude of the velocity in that direction. We want a little bit less. And again, I happen to have played around with it a little bit, and 0.3 seems to come out pretty well. So that's where we're going to end. All right. Um, and what I'll go ahead and do now, I think I've got this set up correctly, is I'll go ahead and add the... Uh, 
persistent debug type. And what this is going to do is draw a red line out so we can see where it's going. So if I play now, did I do it wrong? Woo! Get out of here. Play. Yeah, something's not hooked up. We're, oh, oh, we're not actually doing it. So we'll do that. All right. So there we go. Now you can see it's a, uh, oh, and if you, it looks like too, we're going down with, we're tracing downwards a lot here. And I don't really want to trace downwards. I want to be tracing just forward. So, you know, if he's heading downwards, you still want to be tracing forward so it knows to hop. So we'll go ahead and break this too. Um, break. And we'll make a vector. Majakey. Make vector. But we'll just do x and y. We'll leave the z out entirely. And we'll just feed that right into there. And it looked like this was maybe a bit close. It was getting a little bit too close. So we'll do, we'll do 0.4. I don't know. I'll we'll just play with it a little bit. Alright. So now... Yeah, look at that. And you, it looks like it's trailing behind, but it's actually not. It's, uh, that's just the persistent. So if, if you turn the debug type, this is another useful thing, you can do just for one frame. So now it's, it's just, you can see it in front, but it disappears after a frame. And you notice that since I have this hooked up to the uh, forward velocity, the faster I'm going, the longer it gets, which is actually very useful for us because if you're trying to jump over an impediment, you need a little bit more lead time if you're going faster. But we're not jumping yet, so let's go ahead and prove that we can do this. So we have here a return, which is just saying, hey, did this particular trace hit anything? So for this event tick, did this particular trace hit anything, yes or no? And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to say if this, then, and we again want the sphere, and we're going to set the linear velocity. We want to add to the current, and we'll go ahead and say upwards by 100. So if this is true, if it hits something, we want to go up by 100. If it doesn't, man, just leave it alone. So now, when we play, if everything has gone as it ought to, oops, pops right over. And there's a lot more you can do with these. I'm not going to go too much more in depth. This is the basics. I think a lot of it is self-explained or explained by the documentation. But if you're just wondering how to get one set up in the first place, uh, this, is, this is a good starting place. So there's a lot of other stuff you can do. You can take the hit value out, and I'll go ahead and break the hit result. So you can just see all of the options that you have to play with here. Um, blocking hit, initial overlap, these are both booleans that you can ha have come out. Um, I use oftentimes the hit actor. This is, hey, I hit something, what is it? And then you can do a cast to, you know, whatever you want, and say, hey, did I hit something in particular? Did I hit another, did I hit a wall? Should I put a bullet hole in? Did I hit another actor? Should I take health away from them? You know, whatever it needs to be, that's really useful. Sometimes you want to know uh, if a component on an actor was hit. So you can do Hey, okay, what actor did I hit? Is, is it a player? Yes? Okay, well, in that case, can we uh, check to see if this component is that? So we can, like, get a component off of this actor and then do equals. So um, I can say cast to thing, a thing doer. And then here I have a component. So a sphere I can do equal this component here. So I want to see if I hit another, if I hit the sphere. Um, stuff like that. Very useful. And the last thing I'll say is that it's very useful to have ignore self on because otherwise we're starting at the center of the sphere and we're going forward. If ignore self is off, it's immediately going to hit. So if, if you can't see your trace and you have debugging on and it's persistent, then uh, maybe this is set to false. So you should check that. Well, that's it. I hope that was very useful, or at least somewhat useful. If uh, you appreciated this, feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, ask me in the comments, and I'll see if I can't make a video, or if I don't have time, or it's too complicated of a question, or I don't have any idea how to answer, I'll try and respond back in the comments. So have a nice day, and thank you for watching.